This is Marco Reus. This is Shinji Kagawa. This is Nuri Shahin. Hello, this is Jaden Sancho. And you're listening to the Yellow Wall Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 372 of the Yellow Wall Pod. I'm your host Stefan Butzko and today we will talk about Borussia Dortmund's second leg in the Champions League quarterfinal against Manchester City where they will have to overcome a 2-1 deficit in order to reach the semi-final which might either be against Bayern Munich but it right now looks more likely to be against PSG. For all that and more joins me Dan Berg from the Blue Moon Podcast. Hey Dan, how are you doing? Hey Stefan, I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on this prestigious podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the mm. meantime, however, we do have a sponsor for this episode. Wir sind komplett schuldenfrei. Wir zahlen keinen einzigen Euro an Zinsen. And this episode is sponsored by Jordan Hunt. And uh, the reason why he's sponsoring it is uh, the Ansgar Knopf goal. Uh, he was so happy with him scoring the 3-2 winner against VfB Stuttgart on Saturday that he thought, ah, I might just punt 10 bucks here and uh, have this episode sponsored. So, Jordan, thank you very much. However, the Stuttgart game is not the match we are going to talk about now because uh, it is the Champions League quarterfinal and that is, of course, a special game. Uh, I'm sure we'll still find plenty of time on Thursday to talk about the Stuttgart match. In the meantime, though, then uh, Manchester City uh, made it quite interesting, I, I thought. Uh, I uh, <laughs> predicted <laughs> Dortmund to lose the uh, first leg 5-2 to two in my uh, eternal pessimism, obviously. Uh, <laughs> may maybe maybe something we call it Zweckspessimismus in Germany or strategic pessimism. Um, <laughs> how did you come out of this first game as a Manchester City fan? Uh, how nervous were you during the 90 minutes? I was very nervous actually. I mean, it, it was a, it was a weird one because um, obviously Dortmund's form in the Bundesliga hasn't been amazing lately. And you know, when the draw was made, I was like, okay, this is going to be a tough one. I, I fancy City to get through it, but it's going to be a tough one. And, and the sort of closer we got to the the game and and the sort of results Dortmund had had recently, I was thinking hmm, maybe we might actually stroll through this one. You know, we've been we've been so dominant in the Premier League recently. Maybe maybe it might be quite easy. And then as the game game panned out, it was it was a really difficult game. Yeah, I mean I mean uh, you know Jude Bellingham bossed it in midfield didn't he um, should have had a goal that was a ridiculous decision I think to disallow that goal of his um, and it, I mean City had, City had a good second half and, and Foden missed like a few chances and and then when Dortmund equalised I was sort of cursing cursing Foden for missing those chances and thinking we'd really blown it and really made things difficult for ourselves so to get that goal at the end was 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 quite handy and, and, could, and will be quite helpful going into the second leg but it's still Still all to play for, still a job to be done in the, in the second leg. So um, yeah, if, if Dortmund play like that again, it could be could be really tricky for us. Yeah, the question I have for you is Manchester City going to play the way they played in the first leg? Because uh, I was actually quite surprised to not see them press as intensely as they often do. Uh, they were not as quote unquote greedy for the ball. Mm. Um, Dortmund was able to have multiple stints of possession where they just kept it among their own ranks. And I think that really helped them sort of not be entirely fatigued toward the end of the game. Obviously, any team playing against a heavy football uh, possession side like Manchester City is going to be uh, fatigued after 90 minutes. This is how the, how, how the game works because you have to like, be very disciplined in how you chase after the ball. And uh, so I thought that was a positive, but uh, maybe you can explain to me why Manchester City played the way they did play. Yeah, I, I got the impression that the, the the sort of strategy was not to concede an away goal in the first leg. And they played a little bit within themselves compared to how they usually would play. They usually play a little bit more uh, kind of gung-ho, a little, a little bit, take the shackles off a little bit more. And with the game sort of going going towards the end at 1-0 to City, I was thinking, OK, well, you know, a few more goals for us would have been nice in the first leg, but we haven't conceded an away goal. That's that's fine. You know, that sets us up really nicely for the second leg. Then Marco Royce pops up and scores. And I'm thinking, ooh, <laughs> this, this, wasn't, this wasn't in the script for City, really. So 
um, with 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 that away goal in mind, um, City now don't have to go out and, and and score an away goal in the second leg, obviously, but they will certainly be you know advised to go and try and get one, and it would be really helpful if they did. So I'm expecting perhaps a, a, a bit more of an attacking display from City in the second leg. I mean, they they played Leeds at the weekend and lost, but they did the, the silver lining of that defeat was that they did rest Kevin De Bruyne, Ruben Diaz, Riyad Mahrez um, for the whole 90 minutes um, with a few other players uh, like Ilkay Gundogan and. Uh, um, you know, Gabriel Jesus and, and Sergio Aguero sort of didn't play as well. So um, they might have a few more kind of attacking uh, options to call on uh, fresh legs and it might make uh, things a little bit more uh, interesting for City in terms of their dominance in the second leg. Yeah, I did have the impression, I don't know if I'm right about this, but that City looked a little bit tired in the first leg. They were not mm. the freshest team. There were a couple of tactical and technical errors that you would not suspect them making, to be honest. Um I've I've seen them much sharper, but I assume having the ability to rest players because I think the lead in the Premier League right now is so high that you can really afford to throw a game if need be. And I feel <laughs> like Guardiola really telegraphed that loss too. He just sort of spoke it into being, if you will, because he yeah. has like the utmost respect for, for Bielsa's team, obviously Leeds. It's the sister city of Dortmund, so. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah, uh, as a as a as a student, I I was there for a week as an exchange student be between oh, schools. Right. So I've I've been to Leeds, <laughs> not to the stadium or to any Leeds game, but um, if someone were put uh, were to put a gun to my head and uh, ask me to support a Premier League team, which I do not, uh, I'd probably pick Leeds. But uh, <laughs> just for that reason, uh, yeah. I do not support the Buffalo Bills, however, because Buffalo is also the sister city of uh, Dortmund. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about uh, all the sister cities I know, even though there are probably plenty more uh, on other continents, about, yeah. <laughs> uh, countries. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um, in, in Dortmund's terms, I think Bellingham, Hummels and Royce, who all had to... And, and Knauf, who all had some sort of knock, I think, against Stuttgart. Um, Hummels, I think, was sopped off with uh, with stomach cramps. Mark Royce uh, was at the end of a very hard challenge and sort of limped off the field. I think they, they are all cleared for the game. Uh, unfortunately, Jaden Sancho, of course, who could be a massive game-changer for Dortmund, uh, is uh, only returning to individual training, and this game will definitely be too soon for him. Uh it's kind of a shame because I obviously would have uh, loved to see the Jaden Sancho revenge game. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, yeah. But uh, yeah, we have to make do without him. Ansgar Knauf obviously uh, might be another option to start in the second leg as well. Then I assume you follow the Bundesliga as well since you are Berlin-based, right? And um, you do work for one football. There's uh, not much of a way around uh uh, following <laughs> it, how have you seen Dortmund and especially uh, the debut of uh, Ansgar Knauf in the Champions League? What what did you make of that? He was good, wasn't he? I mean, I must admit that I don't I don't watch as much Bundesliga these days as I used to because I sort of focus on the Premier League and the way that the Premier League the sort of kickoff times are staggered now. Yeah, fair enough. If you want to kind of if you want to keep keep up with it, you kind of have don't have much time for for much else really. So I've probably only seen Dortmund five or six times, um, but I did watch them against Stuttgart at the weekend. Um, and, and yeah, Knauf was really good against City last week. I thought he, he really gave, um, was it, well, yeah, Kyle Walker running uh, right back, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he really gave him a run for his money, I thought. Um, really made things difficult for him and had him on the back foot at times. So, and obviously he scored the winner against Stuttgart at the weekend as well. So that was a nice little boost for him, I think. So uh, yeah, Sancho is is one that, you know, I, I would have quite liked to have seen him come up, against, come up against City in the Champions League as well, see what he can do. Um, if he doesn't make it, uh, it's going to be a shame. But I think Knauf is a, is a decent option to, to have as a backup, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's just 19 years old, uh, only uh, a couple senior minutes, really, if, if you think about it. It's crazy to throw a player like in like that into a Champions League quarterfinal yeah. against arguably the best team in the world right now. Uh, <laughs> so it's... Yeah, uh, to th to me that 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 was uh, quite refreshing to see because obviously you always want your youth products to perform quite well. So um, obviously Manchester City uh, played a very strong lineup in the first leg. I th when I read the team sheets, I thought, huh, maybe they're a little uh, little um, imbalanced. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, do you expect any changes in the meantime from uh, from the first leg? 
Mm, I don't know, really. I don't think so. It, it wouldn't surprise me if he went with an almost identical eleven for the for the second leg. I mean, the the way that City have played this as year has been quite strange in that they've sort of, you know, they haven't had Sergio Aguero pretty much the entire season. When they have, he's been really unfit and he's been sort of coming off the bench and things like that. Gabriel Jesus is a guy who is a good player, uh, but has never like thoroughly convinced us that he's he's like ah, oh, you know, good enough to be a starting number nine every week for City. How so about, a lot of the time, how on. about Sterling? Oh, now there's, he, he's had a very weird season still. And I mean, the, the numbers say that he's our second uh, highest goal scorer, but I can't re remember the last time he, he sort of had a, a decent patch of, of goal scoring form, really. Um, he played really poorly against Leeds at the weekend. He started that game, missed a really good chance at nil nil. Um, I'd be I'd be pretty surprised if he, if he played against Dortmund on, on Wednesday. Um, I think he, he's sort of part of the second string now, really. Uh, hmm. at this moment in time is, is out of form so yeah I'd be surprised if he played so yeah if, if Pep named the exact same 11 for the second leg that, that wouldn't surprise me as he, as he had for the first yeah I mean it was a strong lineup and I, I still think they were over 90 minutes the better team even though with that rather very controversial call on Jude Bellingham I still think <laughs> yeah. uh, to to would have been a fair result <laughs> Um, hmm. But yeah, uh, I think Dortmund are very vexed that they conceded this very late goal, which was, I think, just a simple ball over uh, the top over Munier's head. And uh, obviously, Manchester City did focus heavily on that right flank uh, or, hmm. or uh, Dortmund's right side on their left side. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was this overload with Foden and Gunnar, which I think was a smart ploy. Um, and obviously, Dortmund have been... Uh, or Dortmund fans have not been very happy about Meunier's performances this season at all. I mean, he was a free transfer from PSG, but uh, thus far he's not playing a very good season and he is on extremely high wages, you know, pre-pandemic wages, as you would call <laughs> yeah. it. So um, the expectations for him as the uh, veteran Champions League player that he was advertised for are very high and he is making a lot of mistakes. I don't know if that was necessarily a mistake because it was a good cross but uh yeah i still think he could have cut it out um but yeah that's that's uh hard to debate now um i think Dortmund would have a decent chance if it was a sold out west final stadion on uh wednesday night um mm -hmm. how do you think C city are going to approach this game you you said they're going to be a bit more loose um They really just have to score a goal, and then it's going to be very difficult for Dortmund to, to, to score. Uh, I guess two or so. Um, but obviously, there's always an advantage if you start a tie, uh, and you're always already through on a on a scoreless draw. So, with that being in mind, do do you think uh, we'll, we'll see a very similar tactic, or do you think we'll see more pressing and more counter attacking? I imagine that City will, will press a little bit more and try and sort of set a few traps for Dortmund over the pitch. Because, you know, Dortmund have got to come out and play, haven't they? They've got to come out and, and search for a goal. And I think that, that plays into City's hands quite well. Um, I, I totally agree with you about the, the empty stadium being, being a problem for Dortmund. I think that would be a real sort of leveller of the two teams if that was the case. And uh, we found that, the, you know, we, we won at Anfield for the first time in 20 years uh, <laughs> this season, basically, because, you know, normally Anfield's a stadium that City go to and, and panic because the crowd get on the, you know, behind the home side, get on the away side's back and, and, and City don't like that at all. And I think it would have been the same uh, going to Dortmund if there were fans there. But as it is, the, the games are being played in sort of laboratory conditions almost. And yeah. and all it just requires City to just go out there and just be the better football team. And, and nine times out of 10, they do that really. So, Yeah, if I'm being honest, I, I'm kind of expecting the same uh, again on Wednesday. I, I think City will will probably um, try and nick an early goal and then just just coast through the game. Of course, if Dortmund get the early goal, then it then it really <laughs> changes things and it really makes things interesting, doesn't it? But um, but yeah, the the longer the game goes on at nil nil, the better it is for City. I think really. Do you think there will be a Guardiola wildcard in uh, the sense that he'll overthink something so dramatically that uh, <laughs> it, it, something goes horribly wrong for City? God, I really hope not. I really hope not. Because, I mean, any, any City fan will tell you that that has been our downfall in the Champions League so many times. I mean, I think with Guardiola often, the, these like tactical innovations, if you want to call it that, that they only get highlighted as, as a flaw after a bad game, after a bad result. You know, when, when things have gone well, he's hailed as a genius. When things have gone badly, he's hailed as, you know, be, or he's been told that he's, he's overthought it and, um, you know, outthought himself, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, I, I'd like to think that, you know, he knows his team well enough at this point to know that you don't want to confuse your players before a game like this. Just 
you know, like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if he, if he picked the exact same 11, played with pretty much the same tactics as last week and just said, come on, do what you did again last week. It's, it's as simple as that. I mean, there was some weird, like, tactical... Uh, thing going on against Leeds at the weekend obviously they went down to 10 men in the first half and played the whole second half with 10 men and played with a very sort of low block parking the bus you know defending and and Guardiola's way to counter like that was just having John Stones sort of like running forward with the ball I read a stat that John Stones uh, drip, had, had like more dribbles than any player in a Premier League match this season John <laughs> Stones like, it's really weird that isn't it but it's just if you watch the game it was strange the ball just kept coming to Stones and he kept playing he, he kept sort of striding forward with it so um, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get with Guardiola. He'll, he'll always think of something. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong. And I just hope, uh, hope it goes right this time. Well, from a Dortmund perspective, I really hope that uh, Emre Can can uh, contain his uh, Champions League errors because he has committed mm. several against Sevilla. And uh, I think the first goal against Man City, he sort of gave away. Yeah. I mean, there was still a, a chance to defend it. But it was just really, I think, like a five meter pass or so right into the foot of a Manchester City player. And those things tend to not end well in the Champions League on that level. Yeah. They uh, tend to get punished. Um, yeah, so switching over to maybe the, the other game. Uh, <laughs> who do you want out of the PSG Bayern tie if Manchester City do progress? And who uh, do you think will come through? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, who do I want? Um, in spite of everything, in spite of Bayern, uh, you know, not looking great at the moment without Lewandowski, I would say that I still want PSG. I, I still feel like PSG are a little bit more beatable than Bayern, um, which sounds crazy to say if PSG beat Bayern. But you know what I mean? It just seems that they, you know, they've not been doing amazing in, in Liga in this season. Um, Pochettino, I don't think, has is, is, is quite sort of got the team playing the way you would like at the moment. Obviously, they have so much danger in, in the form of Kylian Mbappe and, and Neymar that, you know, they could cause any team problems. Um, but Bayern, they just seem to be, they just seem to have a bit more about them at this level. Obviously, they, the Champions League holders, um, always a very strong team um, in Europe. Um, you know, even without Lewandowski, they've, they've got Thomas Muller who can do something. They've got Kimmich, they've got, you know, All, all those players who can who can do something. So it wouldn't surprise me if they did come back in the second leg. Um, it's going to be tough for them because obviously PSG have got those three away goals. But again, Bayern get that early goal and, and it's it's wide open, isn't it? So yeah, Bayern yeah. in their in their history have of one games with two or more goals deficit. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, I I really don't know. Uh, first of all, I was really rooting for PSG against Bayern because I just don't like Bayern, and uh, mm. I have heard every <laughs> reason why not to like PSG. And I I concur. However, um, yeah, it's kind of it's still fun to see uh, them getting picked out out uh, 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 getting picked apart. That's what I was going for uh, <laughs> by uh, Neymar and Mbappe. I think that was uh, really fun to watch. Um, yeah. On the on the other hand, uh, I think if Manchester City go through, uh, having them go head to head against Bayern Munich is very interesting because they are very similar. Bayern also wants to see a lot of the ball. They do press re really well, even though in the Champions League sometimes they don't for whatever reason against PSG. They really had trouble with mm -hmm. their counter press, but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I. If Dortmund make it through, I really don't want to play against Bayern. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that extra stress and that uh, yeah. media hype around it. I really do not. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping PSG go through uh, either way on on Tuesday. So I mean, we will know the uh, potential opponent for for the semifinal. Then just wanted to get your take on it. Anyway, then yeah. um, I'll leave it here. Uh, do you have any prediction? scoreline prediction or anything else you want to <laughs> think might might happen anything crazy i mean I'll, i'll go for the prediction i wrote a little preview piece before we started recording this at work today and i'll go for the the, the scoreline i went for there which is 2-2 which will be a nice little compromise i think for you know a, a very exciting open attacking game with goals but one that still sees city going through <laughs> to the next round i'll be okay with that and yeah if, if we if we um If we go through and we get if we we get PSG in the next round, I'll be I'll be pretty pretty scared about that. But you know, if Bayern come back and then we get them in the semi final, I think I'll be more scared of that. So especially when Lewandowski uh, is back as well, then exactly, yeah, exactly. So yeah, 
<laughs> Let's just hope fo- football is the true winner, is what I always say of these, you know, when we go into these games. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is a 2-2 prediction would sort of twist that Bellingham wrong call and knife even more in Dortmund's hearts. Yeah, right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a realistic... I mean, an- anything can happen. Manchester City can also just blow out Dortmund, or Dortmund could just, I don't know, rally to win the win. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a prediction here, uh, but uh, for for the sake of it, I'm just going to say Dortmund are going to win one nil, and Manchester City will waste like six thousand percenters, <laughs> and uh, it's just the football gods. Uh, I think yeah. this is this is what I have to rely on. But uh, why not? There's there's a little bit of hope there. Uh, I could play several. Ted Lasso clips at this point. <laughs> I don't know if you watch the show um, because they also play against Manchester City at some point. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you very much, Dan, for coming on. Uh, please tell our listeners how to follow you on the Twitter. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Fussball Dan on Twitter. Very nice. And uh, that's all for this week. We will be back on Thursday. Goodbye.